So what is all this energy dashboard stuff? Well, in Home Assistant, the great developers have made it really stupid simple to go through and add in your power consumption of different devices and your solar and then even feeding back and then the different tariffs and the amounts and everything. It's pretty nice what they've done so far. And this is only the beginning. Well, if you followed the channel for some time, I did a video probably a couple years ago of the DIY home power monitoring, and that is using ESP Home. So, of course, it's all open source software and it's purely local. There's nobody else's server in the cloud to deal with and then to change stuff and turn it off. You own the equipment and you control the destiny of that data. Um, let me tell him something. Um, like and subscribe or you will have a flood like this. <laughs> And with that said, of course, there's always going to be all the different markers and chapters. That way you can just skip along and don't have to listen to me ramble. Well, I guess you would, but you could put it on 2x as well. So if there are some other power monitoring solutions that are local, open source, definitely let us know down in the comments down below. I'd like to take a look at them because right now, as it stands, the one by circuit setup is hands down the most flexible and open solution that I can find because you could do so many different circuits. You can just expand and add additional boards to it to do some six channels to 12. And now of course I want to do 18 channels. So definitely let us know down below if there's anything else out there that does, you know, hit all the check boxes that we need. So what does this exactly solve? Well, previously, I mean, you had graphs and you could go look at things in Home Assistant, right? Absolutely. The default graphs, they're typically, what, 24 hours of usage. And I can see the total amps for both of my split phases. Yes, I'm in the U.S., so we have a split phase set up in a residential where we have 120 volts on one side and 120 volts on the other side that are out of phase. And then they put those together for our larger appliances, such as electric dryers and air conditioning, electric stoves, electric water heaters, etc. I mostly have gas in my home, of course, except for air conditioning. So that's what a lot of these you'll see are the different air conditioning cycles running. I can even come down here and tell that I know what this was. This was the coffee pot that was cycling on and off this morning. I probably shouldn't have let it run that long from what 6 40 ish to 8 o'clock I don't think I was drinking coffee that long so some stuff like that I could build in some sort of automation of hey I've let the coffee pot run too long and now I'm wasting electricity and I should go shut that off but what about we want to go to yesterday that's not a thing and yeah, there's other ways to do it you can install Influx DB, whether it be in an add-on or Docker container along a Grafana, but there's a little bit of setup to that. And I understand, yep, the learning curve to do that. It's, yeah, it's a little more than some people want to go through. And that's the whole thing with the big push with Home Assistant is making it really easy for anyone to do one particular thing like this solution of the energy dashboard here you go pick your things hit save and you're done and it starts making all kinds of data for every day now i may be a little biased at this point but once you do set up influx or Gafana, it's downright may make some beautiful looking graphs but there is a big learning curve but of course with that you can do a lot more so i get where things are and i do like both solutions but you can come in here and go grab all your data for say seven days ago. I wanted to see what went on and I can, you can 
click and zoom in on stuff and go all the way down to exactly what you want to see. So Grafana is very cool, but again, there's a big learning curve to get it set up. So don't get me wrong, not knocking Grafana and Influx are great solutions, but we're here to do the thing with Home Assistant. All built in, right? So I don't have solar on my home, but hey, if any company that wants to sponsor it and drop off some solar panels in the front yard, we'll definitely get them installed. Hey, we might even make a video about it because I know a guy. What I've done, I have mocked up a solar sensor. It's just I use the sensor that's actually on my mini split and kind of that was a smaller usage and that way it could look like I do have solar feeding into it. And you'll notice there's all the energy usage and then here's the solar production and then here's the sources. I have it broken out in all the different phases or split phase and how much it cost. I, I believe I just threw in kind of a roundabout cost. I didn't remember what I actually paid. And then I actually threw in just some, these are some Tasmoda plugs and it, there's no special setup on them. You just use the Home Assistant Tasmoda integration and that will pop up and we'll get to that in a minute on talking about some of the entities that don't show up and which ones do. So how do we get all this in here or power monitoring for the whole home? Well, let's do a little update check on the newer hardware with the circuit setup, 612, whatever expandable, board and then we'll go through and show you how to set that up into ESP home. It's pretty simple, but there's just a few steps to it. And well, let's get on and get to it. So this is the version 1.3 of this board. There's been a few corrections since we've done our power monitoring video on whole home, do it yourself, power monitoring and doing it very accurately. And this is the one where we've taken the initial board and then you stack an add-on board on top of it and it does add an additional six channels so you'll get six channels out of this side and you'll get six channels out of this side for doing your CT clamps and one of the big changes since the initial video is the way ESP home and the wiring of the board itself all the ICs which are these two chips here they actually do the proper power factor and also do the proper wattage calculation. It's not just using what we kind of had to do a hacky way of assuming power factor one and doing voltage times watts. So that's not going to be the case here. And we'll show that in the YAML code. So this is just a little 3D case. You can buy this from Circuit Setup if you like. If you don't have a 3D printer, I did print this out and there are different sizes. They do have the STL files for you to download and do print your own case, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing I do want to do a little differently. Before you had to, of course, you gotta use a ESP32 chip, put it on the board, and the Wi-Fi antenna is this little PCB here. Well, I wanna do something a little differently, is I wanna have the board be able to be inside the breaker box that way of not having to run all those wires outside this wire outside of the box itself and give me a longer wi-fi antenna and that way i could mount the wi-fi antenna outside of the breaker box itself because the breaker box is metal and grounded so it's like the perfect Faraday cage, unfortunately. So do make sure when you are putting this on here that you do not remove this little spacer here that prevents you from putting that ESP32 too far down and that would fry your ESP32. And simply, you wanna face the USB connector down, pop it right in, and there we go. We have our ESP32, it should go on correctly. And there we go. Got a nice little case here all covered up. Nothing will get in it. And then we can plug in all our, our CT clamps on the side. Now Circuit Setup has gotten us some very cool, super small little CT clamps in their 20 amp range. So these are perfect for, in the US, your typical household circuit. 
and they're gonna give you some really high resolution because it's only 20 amp versus say taking a 100 amp CT clamp and trying to only say measure, you know, one amp or something, which it does work great, which we did show that, but you can even get some stupid resolution by using a proper size 20 amp and this comes with the 25 milliamp output so that means all you have to do is take the 3.5 millimeter jack plug it into and that's it and then put this around your load you're done you don't have to cut any burden resistors or anything and now you're monitoring pretty cool stuff now one thing i did want to talk about is safety yeah i know you probably bored uh, well and typically on some breaker panels, you can't turn off the top of the breaker panel because that's where the mains feeds in. And that's where you only way you could do that is unless you pulled the actual meter on the outside of the house. And I know in my area, we're not supposed to do that. We have to cut the lock off and yeah, it's I, I'm not going to go there. So please do be careful of what you're doing in your breaker box. If you don't know, don't guess. Go find some drunk cousin that thinks he watched some guy on YouTube on how to install these clamps and have him do it. No, no, don't do that. Stop it. Get some help. Find a professional that will help you do it or you can watch them do it and you can just assist of where they go with circuits, etc. And then you'll know kind of how they go, but maybe you shouldn't go do your buddies when you've been drinking too much as well. So do make sure you are safe and do the thing, do all the things, don't need any doctors or whatever because they won't get to you quick enough if you pop yourself with all that good mains voltage. So that's out the way. Don't do your thing. Don't come blame me. It's all on you. Probably not how the lawyers want to say that, but whatever. So what I highly recommend is test this on the bench first. You can test it with a little wire and check it out. That way you can get it all configured. That way you're not wasting somebody's time that's helping you install it or installing it for you. You don't want to go over two of them because that would, if they're out of phase, they'll actually kind of cancel each other out. So you just want to have it on one hot wire. Now, if you do have room, say on your air conditioning or dryer, or you know those ones in the US that do, do split phase, it, you can, if you have enough room in there, have one of the leads go through the CT clamp one direction and then have the other lead come down through the other direction and it will add those up for you. A little pro tip there for you. So that's another thing we did want to talk about is if the clamp is the wrong way and you really don't know until you're just really going to have to try it. It's a 50-50 chance you will see the wattage showing as negative. So as you can see here, yeah, we have the ESP32 node MCU. We will gonna program that with ESP Home. You will need to attach to just this ESP chip to your computer or whatever through the USB cable. Do not double power it by the board in here. You'll make this magic smoke come out. Don't blame anybody except for yourself because you heard it here. So if you don't have ESP Home installed and you are running the supervisor, and no, I didn't say it with the T, go rewind it. I can't claim that about the other videos. If you go to the add-on store, I do believe it's in here now. It's under the Home Assistant Community add-ons, but I know you can also go to the ESP Home I.O. page and they have a little link that'll install it for you there. You don't need development. You don't need anything special with it. I don't think there's any even crazy setup. There's no configuration at all with it. Just hit install. Now for the ones that are doing say Unraid, you can just go to the app store in your Unraid server and you can just install ESP Home there and it'll just go through kind of like this and to pull that container for you. The Docker Compose people, you probably know what you're doing there. Just go and add in that Docker tag and pull it down. They have all the information. We'll leave the link down below at the ESP Home webpage. So Circuit Setup has a GitHub webpage with a ton of excellent documentation that he keeps up to date. All the cool links, and if you've done documentation, you can appreciate how much time was put into this. Now the software, so we're gonna go into ESP Home, 
and we're going to take a look at the one with solar. He's got the ESP home file all here for you. We're just going to copy it straight into ours and change what we need. And the cool part, he even has all the current transformer sizes from all the different models that people have done or he's done and did the calibrations on them. So you don't have to spend the time to do the calibrations on it. Now, if you do have a different size clamp, you can go through and basically just change the numbers until you get a good reading on it based on, say, some other type of meter or known load. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit the raw button because we just want to get the raw file. We'll copy and paste it into ESP Home. So if we go over to our ESP Home, and yeah, I wish they would do dark mode on ESP Home. Um, so we're going to go in, add a new, and we're going to make up our own file. I'm just putting this in here just to kind of make that kind of core file. So it's ESP32, hit next, and it creates the energy monitor. I'll go ahead and hit, hit edit. And I don't want any of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to the raw, control A, control C, and we'll control A, and we'll paste that right over the install here. And the display name, I'm gonna change that to the 6C not meter. I guess I should have called it meter, but we'll call it monitor. Why I have a static IP, if you're curious, I know you don't require for every network. I've had issues with MDNS and the name's not resolving at times. So I just chose to do a secrets file and I put all my IP addresses for all my different ESB home devices in there. And it's a one-stop shop and I won't confuse the IP addresses. And then same thing for gateway subnet and DNS. I just put a secret entry in there for those as well, even though they're not really secrets because it's just a local... 10 dot non routable IP. Again, because there are those six channels. So here's the channels. You can see he is looking at house L1 amps. He's got the solar, he's got hot water, he's got dryer all the way down. And then these are the templates. So of course you would change it based on what you had. And there is a example, let's say if you had the 12 channel, you can just use that file and just name it what you name each thing of what circuit they go on. Of course, if you have different size clamps, you'll need to also change the calibration size for that clamp. Because say you may have a 100 amp on say two of the channels for your whole home. And then say you did the other four, you did say a 20 amp on each. Of course, you'd wanna have the calibrations correct for each channel. The templates. This is where things gonna get unique based on your setup again. Now, of course, he's got listed in here the house L1 amps and house L2 amps. Those, again, this is the US setup. So is there's two of those phases that split phase you need to add them together to get the entire whole house amps. So you're probably going to use that in your energy consumption panel. Then same thing for watts. You're adding all those watts together. And then there's the ever important ones. You do need to have these in here for the energy panel to see them. You need to have the total daily energy of the house kilowatt hours. So here's the kilowatt hours. He's doing the entire wattage of the entire house. Then also he's doing the entire total solar watts for all the panels, etc. And then he's even got some individual ones, for examples. Say your hot water. And no, it's not a hot water heater. So I just put water heater if I were you. Then dryer and yeah, big plus there. If you have an electric dryer, you can even put a clamp on the electric dryer so you can know if the dryer is turning off and on to give you that ever important notification that the dryer is done. And yeah, we did that in another video with a gas dryer, but that's how you do it with an electric dryer with this as well. If you didn't want to build that little DIY thing clamp. So that's pretty much it. It looks a little daunting file, but it's done for you. You just go in and go change it for what your house is and you call it a day, hit save and hit install. And that is where things are a little different now with ESP Home. I don't agree with some of the terminology here wirelessly because not all everything's wirelessly. There's extra steps to things, but hey, maybe things will get better as they maybe refine some of this, I hope. 
but you can plug into the computer or the server and then do your thing. But I'm just going to hit manual download and it goes through and it will pull all the parts and pieces and do the compiling on your device and it will download the bin file or flash it straight to the ESP32. If you need help with a lot of this stuff, there is a great FAQ guide over on the ESP Home side and they'll help you go through a lot of the parts and the walkthroughs of installing it as well as if you look at the circuit setup GitHub page has all the installation instructions there as well. Or just come hit us up in Discord. There's a lot of cool people and you'll find that link all the way down at the bottom. You can jump into our Discord and go say, hey, I need help flashing this thing. I guess that shouldn't, that's the term. It's install now, not flash. Can't use those scary terms. So again, don't do this. Do not power it and put your USB in and that way you would double power it. Don't do that. You can just take the ESP off of the board. It just pops off and then you could program it that way. Now you will get the error saying it couldn't find the chip of course, but that's no big deal. You'll just pop it back on, power it, and then it will be fine. Or you can remove the power and then you can power it and install the bin file just like that. So be careful and be mindful of doing the power and the USB cable. But like I said, this is just only needed the first time to put ESP Home on it. After that, you'll do everything over the Wi-Fi. Now, of course, if you use the other methods, you don't have to use the ESP Home flasher. So it'll go through, write the bin file to it, and you'll be good to go. Once it's finished, remove the USB cable, power it up with the board power supply, and make sure everything works. You can actually see that we do have it as online, and if we wanted to, we could go look at the logs. As you can see, we're seeing all our sensors. We actually can see the frequency as hertz, and I can see we have the energy monitor for ESP Home waiting to be configured. If it's not in there, you can go through and ES hit add integration, and then you can manually put in the name or the IP address and to add it in there if you're using the API. If you're using MQTT, it will appear in your MQTT. And we'll jump into Energy Monitor, and you can see we have all the entities there. And if you have the web enabled, you can just go to the IP address and pull up all the web page information straight on the device. Now, how do we get it in, into the energy dashboard? First time you go in, it will go through and do the steps for you. If you've already done through and messed with it, you go to configuration and go to energy there. So we're gonna go ahead and hit add consumption. And there we are, we have our consumption. There it is, hit house, and say we'll do a static price. It looks like it's in euros. This is just a little test sensor system. We'll just put something there. Yeah, you can roast me all the comments down there about the prices. Then we'll hit next. And solar, we'll pick solar kilowatts. We'll hit next. Then you can hit individual. Remember we did the ones for the water heater and the dryer. And we'll say, show me my dashboard. There it is. That's it. That hard to install. Now it will, like I say, take up to two hours here to start showing data, but it's going to show all the stuff in here and it'll show your monitor individual devices and then you'll get the days to jump back and forth in there. It's pretty cool that they built this all into Home Assistant and it's not that hard to set up. The really difficult part is just getting that data into your system and we all got to kind of do it a little differently. Some maybe have some power monitoring that comes with their smart meter or whatever, but I don't in my area. So this is how I have to do it is with that power monitoring board. So if you got any questions and know we threw a lot of data at you at one time and parts and products and everything, if definitely shoot me a comment down below, contact me, however you want to do that, or just come jump in the discord link down below. No, we won't bite much. We may pick on each other a little bit, but hey, it's all in good fun. But and we'll answer all your questions and everything. There are some other folks in there with some crazy solar setups and some of them just have some simple stuff and some of them do some great dashboards. So a big mix of people. 
definitely check us out in Discord. And I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers and the YouTube members. It helps bring new projects and products to the channel all the time. Click all those buttons and y'all take care. What is it again? Um, press all the buttons and y'all take care. You're chilling, bro. Hey, bro. You're chilling?